Hi everyone and welcome to this video lecture on the biology of marginality and psychoneuroimmunology. We're going to get to some pretty interesting and, and quite, uh, I would say, uh, challenging terminology this week. So it's worth you reading through the chapter carefully um, and coming to class prepared. We're going to be talking about epigenetics and some of the pieces around epigenetics um, with gene, uh, regarding gene transcription, for example, ribonucleic acid or RNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, which is DNA. So we'll be learning about those processes. We'll be also learning about methylation, glucocorticoid receptors, innate and acquired immunity, the enteric nervous system, the microbiota gut-brain axis, eustress versus distress, We'll learn about the oxidation process, such as free radicals, the master antioxidant, glutathione, and other antioxidants. We'll learn about oxidative stress, and then inflammation, which includes cytokines and macrophages. So pretty heavy duty stuff. Let's begin with epigenetics. You're going to be learning about the role of RNA in transcribing DNA into protein. You will learn about uh, what goes on so that your uh, DNA is expressed as protein. You'll also be learning about methylation. Methylation is important because it affects gene expression. So when a, uh, for example, uh, uh, part of your DNA is methylated, uh, it suppresses gene expression. And so that's important to understand that genes can be turned on but also off. We're going to be learning about a very famous study by Meany and Ziff that looked at uh, the role of rat mothers in stress sensitivity in their pups. And this is a Im very important study that will then be applying to human growth and development uh, through uh, the lens of looking at some, some human studies in terms of stress sensitivity. For example, uh, when looking at the epigenetic support for multi-generation transmission of stress sensitivity, we'll be looking at some studies by Yehuda and, and colleagues about the, uh, the increased uh, uh, degree of, tr of uh, chronic stress uh, and high amounts of cortisol in child survivors of, of, of the Holocaust, if that makes sense. So in other words, Holocaust survivors, their children, and looking at their own stress sensitivity uh, and the role uh, of parenting and uh, the role of, um, of ge genetics in passing on stress sensitivity. We'll then learn about the immune system and the enteric nervous system. There are a couple of branches that we're going to spend time on the acquired and the innate immune system. It's important to have this kind of broad based knowledge before we move into the specifics about the microbiota gut brain axis. So the enteric nervous system will look at the relationship between the gut, uh, the gastrointestinal system and the brain and the impact of stress on those systems. We'll learn about the uh, factors that affect the gut microbiome. And then we'll look at the role of chronic stress uh, in, to, in the uh, immune system response, in the response of the gastro system. And we'll learn that first off, stress is not always a bad thing. And as you can see from this graphic, you want kind of a balanced amount of stress, not too little, not too much. This is known as eustress. We'll then learn about the role of chronic stress. That's very high, chronically high levels of stress and its role in inflammation and the inflammation process. And we'll learn about, for example, what happens with inflammation and its role in turning off the cortisol loop. In other words, uh, instead of you returning to baseline after uh, you've, you've experienced high levels of cortisol, it turns off that, that, that negative feedback loop so that cortisol is still running high. And then we'll look at the what happens when cortisol runs high chronically. We'll learn about what inflammation is. It's important for you to understand how inflammation works as a concept. So we'll be looking here at inflammatory cytokines, macrophages, and how it is that the body responds to infection. 
We'll then learn about oxidation and its role in inflammation. So we'll lo learn about free radicals and antioxidants, those normal typical processes and what happens when that process is disrupted, when there's an imbalance that causes oxidative stress. We'll learn about what oxidative stress does to cells. So you see here a graphic that uh, sometimes we, uh, when you have a normal cell that is exposed to too much oxygenation and free radicals, it causes uh, the breakdown of the cell. And that's obviously very problematic. So that about covers what we're going to be discussing in class this week. We're going to be looking at quite a lot of really in-depth information that's very technical. So come prepared and we will discuss in class.